Hello everyone, how is everybody doing? Hopefully everyone's doing good. And uh, yeah, uh, so today I'll be talking about a video I should have made separately from the one I did before um, because it's something I've mentioned a lot from the past couple of reviews, actually like maybe like the past couple of months. Uh, and um, I get asked about it a lot when I say um, that this isn't the real Kaneki that we're having right now. Now, let me explain before, you know, you go straight to the comments. Um, this video is pretty much going to explain what I mean when I say that. Uh, now, I have told people a couple times what I, what, you know, what I'm trying to say. Um, but it, it is a bit complicated and I, but I have talked about it in a video before. Um, but I realized I should have made a separate video on this topic that way if you know someone else asks in the future uh, I can just reference or you guys can just reference the video uh, so that's what this video is and uh, yeah basically what I wanted to talk about is this I believe that although the Kaneki that has flourished that has come about uh, this whole experience the one that we have now the one that is with Eto, the one that is with Furuta, with the glasses and everything, it is the real Kaneki, but only to a certain extent. Now, basically what that means is even though this is the real Kaneki, it isn't the final Kaneki, it isn't the true Kaneki. Now, I'm not saying that we're going to get a, like, we're not going to get another Heisei. We're not going to get anything like that. All I'm saying is that the Kaneki that we have right now is going to be further developed into the final Kaneki, which will become the real Kaneki, which will be the true Kaneki of Tokyo Ghoul, the one that we have seen glimpses of and we have we are seeing now a lot more, but it still isn't the full thing. Now, I know that sounds confusing, and the reason that's the reason why I made this video to explain what I'm trying to say by this. So, basically, the reason why I believe this is a very popular theory that's pretty old. Um, pretty much, it came about towards the middle and the end of Tokyo Ghoul, and that is the Demian or Demian theory. Now, what is this? So, uh, in pages 17 and 18, which are the last two pages of chapter, uh, do I even have the chapter here? Chapter 8 of Tokyo Ghoul, of the original Tokyo Ghoul, so in volume 1. Uh, this is the, in this chapter, it's pretty much the chapter where Kaneki's getting beat up by Nishio, and he sees uh, Hide get, uh, um, he, you know, he pretty much gets unconscious from Nishio, and he's about to get, um, killed by by Nishio and this is when he first activates his Kagune um, the last two pages we are given a quote and I'll actually show you guys the pages here so this is when he's about he's about to kind of he's about to get um, killed by Nishio and he's having this flashback of when he first met Hide and um, in page 17 begins the quote so it says the bird fights its way out the egg. The egg is the world. Who would be born must first destroy a world. And it ends in chapter 17 with Kaneki activating his, ka his Kagune. Now, this quote is actually a line of text from um, the book named Demian or Demian um, by an author named Herman Hesse. Now, this is a pretty old book. It was uh, published in 1919. It was actually published in English in 1923, but it was officially published in 1919. Now, why out of... Now, I mean, it's no surprise that we're given a quote here of, of a book because we have seen plenty of books referenced in the story of Tokyo Ghoul. And, you know, we know that uh, Ishida is uh, a, a bit of a bookworm and he um, he likes referencing and he likes drawing a lot of influence. You can tell there's a lot of influence um, from a lot of famous authors and their and their and their books. 
um, specifically a lot of more classical books, a lot of older books, which is which is pretty cool, pretty neat, because um, you know most people read a lot of contemporary stuff. But the reason why I point out this quote and this book in specific is because this book actually is the the closest, if not the main inspiration that Ishida drew to create the to the Tokyo Ghoul story because the story of Damien in, in and of itself is very very identical to the story of Tokyo Ghoul in terms of its themes in terms of certain stylistic in certain in terms of certain styles of character traits uh, settings and just overall message of the book it reflects a lot in Tokyo Ghoul um, and this is where the, the thing comes in of of this final Kaneki or this this true Kaneki so what I mean by this is this this book Damien is about a boy named Emile Saint Sinclair Okay, he's raised in a middle class home, you know, he's not rich, he's not poor, but it's a very interesting thing because this whole book is pretty much a, um, it's it's a lot of symbolism, a lot, a lot of symbolism. So where he lives, um, the the place is, is described as a place called the world of light, um, as well as the world of, Ill of illusion. And Emile's entire existence, um, it, in this book, it can be summarized as a struggle between two worlds, the the world of illusion and the real world. So in this book of Damien, Emile is trying to discover who he is. He is confused throughout the entire book because he is he is in this world of illusion where, you know, everything goes about a certain way but at the same time he is also in this other world this real world and so he seems to be he seems to be in the middle of both of these things okay um and during his journey in the book he is accompanied by this other character who is very mysterious named Max Damien and because of this character that follows him, he becomes to rebel against uh, both worlds. Uh, and he, he goes about doing things his own way. And in the end of the book, he comes to awaken into a realization of self. Now, that is, that is key. The ending of this book is key to what I'm trying to explain here. Because basically this book is a boy who is struggling to grow up. And it, 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 it's pretty much the message of, a, of someone growing up into maturity. And the things that happen to you during that, during that process. You know, it's always, it's always hard uh, growing up because you are confused. Especially during your, your, your younger years and maturing into an adult. Because you're struggling to... Um, make sense of everything and at the same time develop this this character of yours to who you will actually become um and 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 be for the rest of your life um and the, the i like the way that it's it's uh, symbolized because he's he's in this world of, of illusion and in this world of light which is the the technical real world and then this this max demian character or demian character comes out it comes through you know with him throughout this whole process and throughout this whole process he is he's rebelling he's he's doing everything he shouldn't be doing and be from this all of this at the end of the day he comes to accept himself because he realizes that max damien is him max damien is emile sinclair they're both the the same person but they're just both different aspects of 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 himself there's the the light version of himself you know the the uh, the good version of himself, you would say, and then there's the bad version of himself, the dark version, which would be the Max, who is the Max Damien character. Uh, now this pretty much symbolizes the the yin and yang. You know, you can't have light without darkness, and vice versa. Now, this concept is taken into perspective in Tokyo Ghoul with the character of. Kaneki and this is now 
how I can explain now that you get kind of a grasp as to what I mean with the summary of of, uh, of Damien where it's pretty much the the self-realization it's a book about self-realization we come to Kaneki so taking in perspective the life of Kaneki we've had so far he has come from a boy who was very shy very reserved but still very compassionate and caring although there were things he was hiding okay after he is tortured by Yamori he comes to open up into a, a, a very sinister and um, uh, a crazy version of himself a very twisted version of himself where he's very menacing um, he comes to realize that the world is cruel uh, through the hands of ghouls he comes to see the perspective of ghouls and uh, after all of this we get white haired Kaneki right who is this very dark and twisted version of Kaneki but we still see the roots of Kaneki in the midst of all of this he is still very compassionate and caring to Hinami to his group to Tsukiyama and Banjo he still cares about Anteku that's why he escapes from them although he isn't the same person that he was before you know he he isn't the same reserve kind of character he he realizes in order to get things done he has to go about doing things he usually never did, right? Interrogating ghouls, being very aggressive and being very cruel to them. But this was the only way he could actually get somewhere, get answers and get, thing, get things going. This white haired Kaneki comes up, he's, he's with us towards the end of Tokyo Ghoul. Where Arima pretty much, you know, quote unquote, kills him. And then we come to Tokyo Ghoul Re, where we get Heisei Sazaki, which is pretty much the amalgamation of Kaneki white haired and Kaneki black haired. Now, this Kaneki is both of these personalities combined. He's very reserved, he's very shy, but at the same time, he is very open um, and he is very, um, he's a lot more outspoken than he used to be because and these are traits these are traits that come from the white-haired Kaneki because he knows that this is the only way he can con communicate uh, to other people and uh, express himself but here's the thing from the revelation that we get about Kaneki's mother and Kaneki becoming black-haired Kaneki again we start to see again that this whole entire time there were still things that he was hiding there were still things that we did not know about him we did not know anything about his mother actually abusing him and his childhood not being what he actually said it was and so because of this this persona that comes out of Kaneki is finally one of the most realist versions of Kaneki in the story so far because this Kaneki has come to look back into his past and look and see at everything that has happened to him and learn to accept it because up to this point black haired Kaneki white haired Kaneki and Heisei Sazaki there's still a lot of things a lot of experiences that they did not look back to like that moment with um with his mother or the 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 torture of jason uh the reezy experience all of that you know the being a ghoul and a human at the same time all of that it instead of him accepting it it was actually him closing it in shutting it in and reserving it and all that built up over time and just kept on building up and building up up to this point where we got black haired kaneki and black haired kaneki instead of letting things build up what he decided to do was look into it accept it for what it was and decide okay this is how i'm going to do things now and this is actually the real kaneki now here's the thing about it even though this is the kaneki the the, the truest kaneki we have seen for a while 
who is very sinister, but he is very outspoken. Notice how he is very outspoken. He is getting things done. He already captured Eto. He already he he left the cues. He he almost killed Sukiyama. We can still note that he is still compassionate and caring for those he loves. He left why did he leave the cues? Possibly to step away from them because he does not want to see them hurt or he does not want to hurt them. Seems like a lot of us are theorizing as well that he left he made it seem uh, to to kill Sukiyama because he knew um, that that was the only way he could save him unless you know um, it would have been him being captured by the CCG and something possibly worse could have happened. We also theorize that he is trying to do everything he can to rescue Hinami and possibly that is forming an alliance with Eto. If all these things are true, that means deep down there are certain aspects of him that still exist, but these aspects aren't fully developed yet. And now I want to go back to him becoming Kaneki. Okay? Him becoming in the Kaneki we have now. Remember when I said this this version of Kaneki exists because he looked back into everything and he accepted everything? Yes, that is true, but not necessarily. He looked at everything that was bad that happened to him and accepted it. But he did not look at everything that was good that, that happened in his life and accepted it. He only accepted half of himself. And that half, that version of himself, that past of himself that he has accepted is the persona that we are seeing right now. This version of Kaneki has accepted the fact that he was abused by his mother and he had a horrible childhood. He has accepted the fact that a lot of his whole life has been a lie. He has accepted the fact that he has been through pretty much hell with Yamori and Rize and Eto and all his group and every and everything. Okay, He has accepted all of that. But he has not accepted the fact that there are also positives to this whole story the friendship that he had with Hide, his time in Anteku, uh, being with Banjo, having Hinami, being with the Qs. He has not accepted it. He knows it is there, but he has not accepted it. Now, here is why he has not accepted it, but it is still there. Notice how this Kaneki right now, if he wanted to, he could expose Toka and he could expose Yomo if he wanted to. Okay? If he truly hated everyone, he would do that. If he truly hated everyone, he would let Hinami be disposed of. If he truly hated everyone, he would have killed Eto right then and there. If he truly hated everyone, he would have killed Sukiyama right then and there. But he did not. He did not. This Kaneki parallels, it mirrors the white-haired Kaneki, although the white-haired Kaneki still, the white-haired Kaneki was different from the black-haired Kaneki because the, the white-haired Kaneki, he did not accept everything. He All he did was reserve everything and accept what the situation that he was in at that moment. He was tortured. Everything happened. He decided, you know what? And, and for me to progress as a as a as a half ghoul, half human, I have to move on. That's what he did. But this Kaneki now, instead of reserving everything and letting everything build up, he looked into everything bad that happened to his life and accepted it for what it was and decided to move on and to keep on progressing. But because of all of this. There is still the good side of him, the good memories he has, and the good experiences he's had in his life that he has not accepted. He is reserved. He has reserved all of this. Remember that Tokyo Ghoul Re is supposed to mirror Tokyo Ghoul. Okay. Now, this per... Now, like one of you guys have told me in the comments, this character archetype is... It, it is, without a doubt perfect for a tragedy and it makes sense but even though this and, and it has been declared right that Tokyo Ghoul is set up to be a tragedy but even though this is a tragedy it does not mean that her characters still have the ability to change and this especially comes considering the fact 
when we take into consideration Kaneki. Now to sum this up in a sense, I want to give a, a, a characterization um, of another character who is very very similar to Kaneki and I think this will be able to explain it more. Um, and that is the character of Shinichi in Parasite. Now, if you don't want to listen to this, it's pretty much the, the easiest way I can explain what I'm trying to say here. Um, if you don't want to listen to this because I'm going to spoil, I, I'm going to spoil pretty much the story of, of Parasite. Um, you can click on the on the um, on the timestamp in the in the description. Just stop right here and click on the timestamp in the description. It'll take you to where. Um, you know, I, I finished talking about it. I ho hopefully, you already understand what I'm trying to say at this point. But I just want to do a comparison, and then I'll, I'll explain to you guys what you, you know. It'll make a lot more sense. Um, so if you don't want to be spoiled, you know, just click on the timestamp, and then we'll move on to the conclusion of this. So, uh, getting on with this, let's talk Shinichi. So there's a lot of similarities with Parasite and Tokyo Ghoul um, that you guys may not have known of, but I, I don't really want to go into detail with that. Um, I do want to go into detail, though, of the character of Shinichi and how he parallels Kaneki a lot. And it would make sense if Ishida maybe drew inspiration from, from Parasite itself, because one, Parasite is older than, than Tokyo Ghoul. Parasite came out in the 90s. So Ishida must have maybe, maybe read that series when he was younger and liked it and got influence to make Tokyo Ghoul from Parasite. I wouldn't be surprised because not only is the setting uh, uh, somewhat similar with you know the Parasites and the Kagunes, um, the character of the main character is is somewhat similar to the to Kaneki. Uh, but pretty much with this uh, I think I'll be able to explain um, a bit easier what I mean by this this final Kaneki that will come out. So um, Shinichi in the story, he, start, he starts off very timid, very shy, um, but he's also very afraid of, of many things. He's very scared, um, kind of like how Kaneki is in the beginning of Tokyo Ghoul. And then Shinichi, towards the end of, uh, you know, towards the midway point of, of a Parasite, he fuses with Migi, um, pretty much starts becoming a lot more with Migi. Migi starts pretty much taking over his body, and he becomes a lot more barbaric, and the... the um, the animal side of him uh, comes forth from all of this and um, the animal side is what takes over his personality and the Shinichi that we knew before it pretty much is gone you know he ends up hurting so many people because of this and everything but he loses sight of who he actually is but then in the end Shinichi comes to accept himself and accept the nature the animalistic nature of himself and we get this final Shinichi and this Shinichi is totally different from the Shinichi in the beginning and in the middle because this Shinichi realizes that he is not only a human but he is also an animal and both of these traits of him he comes to accept and this is when he fully realizes who he is and not just that he realizes to to accept himself for who he is because no one can say that he is somebody else he is who he is and you either you either die not accepting it or you live on accepting the fact that you are who you are and you just got to go with it you know you just got to embrace it and embrace both sides of who you are the bad and the good and realize that you need to move on and this is the character that we get with Shinichi at the end and this is not what we have gotten with Kaneki remember remember what I said remember when I said that Kaneki has up to this point only accepted the bad part of himself but he has not accepted the full part of himself so what I believe is going to happen towards the end of Tokyo towards the end of Tokyo Ghoul or at the end of Tokyo Ghoul, he is going to come to terms and accept the good version of himself. And then he is going to look at both the bad side of himself and the good side of himself, realize that they are one, and finally accept who he truly is. That self-realization will come into play, and he, we will finally get what I believe would be the true Kaneki. I just put that picture there because I thought it was cool. Uh, but um, 
this Kaneki that embraces not only the fact that he is now a ghoul and a human, but the fact that he has lived a, a life with struggle and pain and regret, but also a life that has had happiness and joy and overall happiness. Just, just a, it's, a, it's been a good life. And he will come to realize that despite everything that has happened to him, he is still present and he, ex he still exists and he has a chance to make things better. He has a new start. He has a new day. And because of this, he can still look at the future and keep on moving. And this is the, this is the Emil Sinclair, Sinclair from Demian. This is what Emil comes to at the end. He comes to realize both the bad part and the good part of himself and accept both parts and realize that he is just a person that is going to have mistakes, that is going to have faults, but he can still move on. And this is what we get with Kaneki. Now, despite this, it makes it sound like Kaneki has a chance of, you know, it, it makes it sound like Kaneki is going to live. The possibility of him dying is still relevant despite what I just said here with this Kaneki, you know, discussion. Because, like we have been mentioned by Yoshimura, Kaneki would be the one to, he would be the bridge that would connect the humans and the ghouls together. He would be the bridge. Now we have seen Eto, she is sparked. A revolution with this because she has revealed to the world that she is a ghoul and we all know that she's going to have supporters supporting her and this is where we're going to get a lot more humans questioning the state of ghouls and humans but Kaneki will become the person who brings both communities together and he will only be able to do that, I believe, he will only be able to do that if he comes to terms with who he is, both the bad part of himself and the good part of, part of himself. And then this is when we get this final Kaneki, and this Kaneki will be the one that brings in the humans and the ghouls into coexistence. Now, all we need is that. All we need is Kaneki to come into that state of self-realization for the humans and the ghouls to coexist. It does not mean that he has to live afterwards because he has already finished his mi his mission, his his goal. Well, maybe not even maybe not, you know it's not really his goal. It's not something that he planned to do, but the goal of the character that has been set upon him to bring ghouls and humans together has already been accomplished. Now, whether or not to, if he lives or dies matters, we don't know. There's also the code, the, the code Geass theory, which a lot of people believe, basically, um, which actually plays in part of it. Kaneki's death being the, the, the death, the final straw, which makes humans and ghouls realize that they shouldn't be fighting each other and that they should just accept each other for who they are and learn how to coexist and learn how to manage through all of this. But he could still be alive. He could still live at the end of Tokyo Ghoul. We don't really know. But what I'm saying is, even though I've stated what I believe to be this next version of Kaneki, this final version of Kaneki, it does not necessarily mean that the option of death is is, an, is irrelevant now. No, it's still very relevant. Actually, maybe even more relevant than before. Um, but we can't take into consideration the fact that we can't we can't say that he's going to die, and we can't say that he's going to live either. We'll just see how the story plays out. But um, basically, that's what I want to say with this. To sum it all up. The Kaneki we have had to this point has learned to accept himself, but only a part of himself, which is the bad part of himself, the bad experience he's had, he's had in his life. But he has not, he has not come to terms with accepting the
the good side of himself and the good experiences he's had with everybody. And I believe the final version of Kaneki to be the Kaneki who comes to accept both the bad and the good versions of himself. And, well, both the bad and good experiences of his life and who he is. And that will um, merge into one personality that will be the true Kaneki, that will be the final Kaneki that we will get to see towards the end or in the end of Tokyo Ghoul. So, uh, yeah, but uh, um, that's all I really have to say. Again, if you, you know, you hear somebody in the comments, you see some, I'll, you know, I'll do my best to, to reference people into the video, you know, if they ask, if they keep asking. But uh, um, this is just a theory, you know, this isn't, this isn't, I don't believe this to be true or anything like that. I'm just saying, um, just out of speculation and seeing the story and seeing the references and everything, I think this could be a possibility. And, um, just keep an open mind um but you know if you see somebody in the comments that says something just refer them to this video and uh hopefully they'll they'll understand but uh hopefully you guys understood this video let me know what you guys think about this and uh yeah let's get a little discussion going um the music before i end this video the music is um by a guy named tobias wilden uh he's on Bandcamp. This album that I'm playing is called Traces. It's a, it's beautiful. Um, it's actually, you can buy it now and name your price. So you can get it for free if you want. But um, I would suggest donating the guy a couple bucks. Um, it, it took a lot of time to make this, um, this album. And it's incredibly worth paying for. Um, even if it's not a whole lot of money. Um, but I'll leave his bank cap in the description down below to this album and his page. So you can check that out. But uh, thanks for watching guys. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.